And Maggie Makes 3 is not a forgettable episode. There, I said it. This is one of those topics that I don't think can be conveyed in 60 seconds very well, and I kind of regret how I went about that review. And Maggie Makes 3 is a fantastic episode of The Simpsons, and deserves better than me trying to figure out why it sometimes slips my mind. Let's try to cover it in more detail, shall we? First of all, this is a really, really down-to-earth episode of The Simpsons. It's actually kind of shocking that it's in Season 6, as the David Merkin-run seasons have a reputation for being really out there and big picture. The Merkin era is full of stuff like Bart getting famous, Homer going to space, or a cat burglar terrorizing the town. And that's just Season 5. There aren't really any gimmicky set pieces in this one. It doesn't have the nostalgic appeal of other flashbacks, like Lisa's first word. We can't go aww at young Bart and Lisa. In addition, Homer's dream job isn't to become a race car driver or something that leads to wacky mayhem. No, he wants to work in a bowling alley. It's not super glamorous or important, but it strikes me as being very true to Homer's character. The plot almost feels like a season 3 episode, you know? There's a lot of observational stuff about working in the bowling alley, and a lot of worrying about finances and stuff like that. The romantic evening consists of them dancing around in a Krusty Burger drive through I really like how in those early seasons, they portray The Simpsons as being happy in their dumpy and mundane sort of way. It's nice. Although the story is very down to earth, the jokes are very much of its era. The jokes in In Maggie Makes 3 are very silly and very carefree, assisted by a decent helping of screw the audience jokes. Actually, I would argue that this episode has the best screw the audience joke of all time. Or at least it's my favorite. I love that scene of Patty and Selma going off to seemingly tell everyone in Springfield about Marge's pregnancy, starting with A. Aronson and finishing with Mr. Zakowski. The music effect transition and Patty's change in demeanor just sells this joke perfectly. Really, this whole segment of the episode is pretty much flawless, because then we get Homer going around town with people wishing him congratulations on the baby. Love Moe's directness and Homer's confused reaction. And then the whole thing is ruined by Maud Flanders of all people, congratulating him on the job. The whole thing is so silly, so arch, so wonderfully executed. And then there's classic jokes like Homer playing Mr. Burns' head like a bongo, his shotgun marketing idea he comes up with, and Homer's weird attempt to visualize sperm. I had never noticed before how Marge's egg is surrounded by her blue hair. I saw the outline was blue, but didn't notice that particular detail. I don't know if I appreciate the clever design more, or if it's just kinda grossing me out now. The thing I run into sometimes with this episode, and why it sometimes slips my mind, is that the Homer-Maggie relationship is really understated in the series as a whole. The emotional payoff of an episode like Bart the Daredevil hits me, because there have been so many Homer and Bart episodes. The relationship had been built up, there is a sense of constant narrative there. Same with Homer and Lisa. They get some of the biggest moments of catharsis because they are such different characters. Just look at the endings of Lisa's Substitute, Lisa the Greek, or Lisa's Pony as examples. Maggie has trouble because, let's just face it, the show doesn't really use her that much. The most Homer and Maggie stuff we get before this was Maggie bopping him on the head with a hammer. There's not really much to indicate that Homer even knows he has a third child sometimes. They kind of lampshade this dynamic in this episode as well. There's a theoretical argument that, why should we care about this ending when Maggie and Homer have never been a thing? This would be like getting emotional about Homer and Moe. How dare you? How dare you theoretical argument I just made up as a thought exercise? I think what works about the ending of this episode, for me, is where it's placed in context with the status quo of the series. We all know that Homer doesn't care about his job. He's constantly miserable there, having to deal with Mr. Burns and meltdowns and stuff like that. And he's always randomly getting new jobs. This is not the face of a man who likes his status quo. And Maggie Makes 3 puts his struggle into context, making me admire him for how much he sacrifices for his daughter. Homer is a simple man who just wants to work a simple job at the bowling alley because he likes it. But he's willing to sacrifice for his daughter because he loves her so much. And he uses her to cheer himself up in such a demotivating situation. Like, let's bring back Lisa's Pony again as a point of comparison. 
That's another example of Homer making serious sacrifices to make his daughter happy. I think And Maggie Makes 3 is more successful because it hits higher highs and lower lows. We get that point of comparison at the bowling alley where Homer could have had it all. Furthermore, there's no get out of jail free card here. It's not like Maggie can give something back like Lisa can. This is the status quo. The ending of Lisa's Pony makes more of a statement about Lisa than Homer, and is slightly more balanced in its character study. I dig the more Homer-centric approach to this episode, kinda taking us along with his personal journey. It's true that from a narrative standpoint that the Homer-Maggie relationship isn't that integral to the series. But the episode treats us like adults, trusting that we will understand the immediate bond felt between a parent and child. In other stories, this kind of character turn runs the danger of coming off as being completely nonsensical. We'd put on our smart little critic hats and wonder, why did Homer change his mind so arbitrarily? Isn't that bad writing? And Maggie Makes 3 is clever in that it knows the dynamic of the situation will allow them to snap back whenever they want. So they're free to pull Homer in one direction to maximize dramatic tension. I totally buy Homer's attitude change in the end, don't you? And Maggie Makes 3 is an episode that is memorable for all the right reasons. It's not because it has a strong hook or gimmicks or anything like that. It's the simple pairing of a genuine down-to-earth story with its wacky and off-the-wall jokes. And hey, having a super heartwarming ending couldn't hurt either.